Red Bull gives you wings. Pearl ends 13 to 9 in favor of Shopify Rebellion, and it was almost a comeback for FaZe uh, until it wasn't. So let's talk about the compositions, <laughs> Wyatt. That's rough. <laughs> Based off the compositions, uh, what was the impact of the different initiators that were picked? Yeah, one of the big questions coming into this was, what will the Breach be doing? And unfortunately, it wasn't a whole lot for the side of FaZe. Uh, specifically on that defense where things just ran away for the Shopify side. You could see that the FaZe team were trying to set up a lot of little trap plays with the Breach, playing off the alarm bots, sometimes fighting for early map control, but it just wasn't getting the consistent value that we were seeing from uh, the KO Sova, which is so meta on this map right now. The information that Shopify were getting round after round just was so crucial. And Sapphire, like, speaking of that KO, part of that information, that entry, Sonder had an incredible performance. Yeah, Sonder played incredibly well. I mean, we know that Sonder historically is a duelist and, and almost played that, that KO with as a duelist. We saw some really nice rounds where she's entering with Flory on that, that jet, um, taking a lot of space for the team. Um, so it's almost like, uh, you know, a pseudo doodle in a role, like in a way. She was playing that, the, the style that she's comfortable with, but with more support utility for a team. It was fun to see. I, like, I'm not sure if we have those Sounder stats, but we were already hyping Wyatt, her matchup against Emmy, and, you know, expecting that duelist matchup, but ending up on KO, which, like Sapphire said, fragged out like one. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, she's, no, you're good some disgusting stats here i think um just playing really well like this is this is the sonder that we've seen on on a global stage dominating as we said have done it before in the lower bracket and you know when their backs against the wall like sonder steps up yeah. well she did as usual um you know sonder because of the performances that she puts up but wyatt um, speaking of Shopify Rebellion, um, their coordination was what was to be appreciated, really. You know, beyond the compositions, the executions were really sick. Yeah, 100%. I mean, this is one of the early attack rounds. You can just see how good their fundamentals were. Lori in that smoke, waiting for the perfect time for Sonder to catch up to her, and then they pop out of it. They're both watching different angles, covering each other. They both find the picks, and then the post plant, kind of a standard situation on Pearl where you're, you've you got the spike planted, and we've seen it a million times. The rest of the team, they're down B long, but they play it out perfectly. It was those simple situations over and over that Shopify were displaying a significant difference in the level of fundamental coordination that they have over phase. So yeah, the like great composition for information, the retakes were good, the execution, everything that felt like FaZe were trying to set up either with the breach was broken as you explained, but 13 to 9, you kind of almost felt like the FaZe, FaZe vibes were coming back at the end. Round after round, they tried, but map two is where they can try even harder. Sapphire, Ascent is map two. What's the copium for FaZe? Well, I mean, you know, the, the copian is the first off the nine rounds, the the comeback that they had. Um, you know, you could also say the copium is doing a, an okay performance against DSG yesterday. While they lost that match, um, they still kept it competitive as well. Um, there wasn't necessarily anything inspiring on the uh, attack side, but they're going to start defense here. Um, Hopefully they start pretty strong. Um, you know, while we're not necessarily going to see the raise probably out of Emmy, like Emmy still played a really good game on, on the jet this last series. Yeah, 100%. She was starting off strong. Those early rounds were mostly off the back of her. And then as the game went on, when they were heating up on that attack side, you saw Panini starting to go crazy as well. And it really is the classic i'm hitting you with a classic trope analyst desk narrative when one team makes a fake comeback about how the momentum is building for map two but it actually kind of did feel that way uh, with panini starting to play so much better towards the end of that map so 
listen, I am holding out hope. Also want to send, they have been playing the extremely standard meta comp. They're not going to go for anything unorthodox like the Breach. They did look good against DSG, like you had said. So that's that's where I stand on holding out hope. Maybe I'm maybe I'm going to break the hope. Like, <laughs> Shopify, <laughs> they love the scent. They played a scent all the time. They haven't played it in in this game changers but it's a map that they played really well they'd get double digits off of b1 and cloud nine white in the past and against those teams that's really the best you could hope for with double digits and that was an, an honor in itself so they play well there um we're, we're probably gonna see um lori and sonder roll slop again where normally we'd see sonder on that duelist but um certainly plays a ko on this map often um recently so yeah, it's, it's a map that historically Shopify likes. They haven't played it as much recently, but you know, they've, they've done well on it. And it was a close call for FaZe uh, on Ascent. That was the first game that they played against DSG. Ended 13 to 10 in favor of DSG, where FaZe, um, not so reliant on that breach. It was the Omen, KJ, Jet, Sova, and KO. Almost something that the, the KO, the Sova, something you wish that they had brought out on Pearl, right, Wyatt? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that would have been nice to see, but uh, yeah, Ascent is just one of the maps that is straight up figured out. You're just going to see the same thing basically every single time. Maybe sometimes you'll see a fade instead of a Sova, little things here and there, but for the most part, these two comps you're looking at, this is what you're getting on Ascent. And it comes down every single time to the very fundamental foundational aspects of what makes the team the team and Shopify displayed that in spades on map one so that is still what I I feel the strong element of their play the carry over from that map that they're going to take into this one that's what's going to be present that's what phase clan have to overcome mm -hmm. Well, it's match point for Shopify Rebellion, last life for FaZe Clan, and what stops them to getting into the top four is their opponent, Shopify, who have been incredible thus far. So, game two is ready. Let's go send it over to Van Sillington. Just gonna sit a serious theme this time around. Thank you so much, Lemon Kiwi, Wyatt, and also to Sapphire and Riv. Yes, indeed. Last life now going down for Phrase Clan, but hopefully they can find a one up. As Wyatt mentioned before, this is a map that's been pretty much figured out. It's the same yep. comps, there's standard ways to play, and you're seeing some nice little maybe shifts here and there from how you want to run the strategy on defense or offense when it's really around circling the ults. So I want to know if anybody here nerded out on, on these type of moments when you have that opportunity to work that, or if not, <laughs> it really comes down to, again, those fundamentals. It almost seems now that when you're looking at Ascent, it's kind of like Icebox now, you know? You know what to expect. Is it? I like that. I like that. But you made me miss Icebox a lot right now. Yeah, no, no. Um, keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> Double Initiator instant in to be here. But it is. You People have it figured out. I think the, the biggest thing is when someone... Blinded. I, I don't know. It's got to be like an agent change, right? Yeah. Well, shark attack on me, though. We don't have time to talk about that. Yeah, that knife is going to do way oh, too much. Emmy? Thankfully here, Flowerful is able to pop oh, both battle storms and even the head of Emmy, who is trying to dash inside the B site. A lineup of two players, but it's still Panini that oh, trades it off. One way smoke getting advantage of the attackers as Jennifer catches KP off the rotate. Big paranoia on the defense. Here's the crossfire setup, but to no avail for FaZe Clan as he popped this spike at least. Advantage for the defenders with a retake. A two versus one, but the two players on sidewalk just take a walk through. More than a Fuse and shop by rebellion. Get the pistol. Oh, well, that got kind of wild for a second. Like, yeah, Emmy in on an island by herself, <laughs> taken down, and then, yeah. Great job. Ghosts into the next round. That feels good. Uh, but, just uh, kind of a text that B. I think. Uh, I don't know how they're supposed to help Emmy. That really puts a lot of pressure on the jet, but I mean, that's the, the play style you're going for. We said these teams were going to be going into the site aggressive, causing that chaos, and we got exactly what we were hoping for. So, no complaints. You had a knife. See if they can get it refined. Again, thrown by Maddie on that attack towards the back of the site was just so strong against Laraful, where. Technically, you should have just taken her down before if, as you mentioned before, you needed some support coming out. But she popped those dinosaurs fast enough just to delay to allow the rest of the shop to come through. And 
This round as the door closes, you just saw the dash Dance? cross. Yeah, they're going all the way towards spawn. There's a huge gap in that smoke. It was Around the world. all the way through. So it missed. Now the door closes on the A side. An opportunity here no, for FaZe to actually just come down towards heaven. And then they're going to say, hey, thanks for this smoke. I'm going to plant right here. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on. Everybody's assisting each other on both ends, both sides of the map. And the plant at least goes down. See ya. Okay, here come the, re the refrags. Yeah. Uh, at least finally the, the shenanigans have ended. Sonder with the last two. But yeah, I mean, you have Panini on the attack, smoking for a gap to allow whoever's playing towards spawn to just ADS with the Bulldog for some, for some picks. Then, as they take control of the A side, the defenders close the door, and then Sibui throws the smoke more than the plant. Not too sure. I, I, I want to see teams do that every eco round. You have to like reach reach a level of just like around the world zaniness to your opponent. But now, yeah. I, unfortunately, they find no members of Shopify Rebellion. We look at that round for real, though, and Shopify backpedaled every position they had on defense to make sure they did not get caught by that death ball, which is why it looked like FaZe was able to run everywhere. That Shopify could hear them. Um, so that round goes down. We're into our bonus now. And Shopify down on two, uh, two sheriffs. Didn't stop them before, but these Vandals are ready here for FaZe. A bit of a patient round to start us off. Yeah. And they have not taken much of the map, Van Silly. If, if they don't go B, it becomes Excellent. scary because the map needs to be completely regained. But they are going to use a bit of util here. Go ahead and drone in. Yeah, find the Ares at least in the hands of KP playing towards the market. But the idea for FaZe, hold towards the spawn. You know that Shopify Blade have a much lower buy on their bonus round. So are they going to try to run some sort of trap? Once now as press. nothing really happens, you're trying to find your first initiation, your first engage, and waiting for the cycle to come again on the, uh, the utility in. you have on the attack. And that's Diane putting out the recon dart here towards the archway. As it might still look like a pivot Ooh. back towards the A site. But you have an underhand throw here as the alarm bot will break. They placed it a little deeper. That. Yeah. Oh! It works out. Down. Just that call rib. Placing it deeper allows here for Shop of to surprise FaZe Clan. 30 seconds left. Cheeky. Cheeky stuff. Emmy still wants the position, though. And there's the alarm bot. <laughs> <laughs> and the bonus round. Okay, you, you talked about it, Riv. There's two sheriffs only. Good enough for them to take the advantage on a four versus two. 10 seconds grenade. left on the yeah. clock. And now you gotta save. There's 10 seconds left. left. Can't really get into the site. And that's, that's the uh, disadvantage as well of playing that default and waiting for your attackers to come against you or your your opponents to come against you on a defense. I would take a high, uh, guess that there's a high percentage of rounds. Uh, I say a low percentage of rounds, actually, where the bonus team makes the buying team save. That I, I very rarely see. Mm -hmm. Shopify Rebellion... These little mind games are making FaZe feel so unsure about just the strat they had in play, right? They didn't yep. really have the time. Again, they had to take control of the rest of the map as we saw them staying outside B at the majority of it with just uh, Panini on the other side as the flank would. And he's been doing a great job at that. But again, one side of the map here, obviously down on their buy a little bit. So they're trying to play that refrag position. But they're, they're kind of putting their all the eggs in one basket each time here at the beginning of the round phases. Slow, slow moving. All right, so they hit now. This is going to be on Emmy as well. Once again, Emmy now this time around, though, being pinged. No wall meant to take her down, so an opportunity now. Right. Pulls right away as Saunder walks in through the spawn with support. Crossfire being set up towards the back of the side as they both fall at least. The right one of the rifles that they had. Remaining in this round, Panini gets Big new crack. kills and the Sheriff could get the backstab. Down, at least Panini is trying to go for the hero play. That's three kills. No Two more needed isolating ghouls here. And if she could actually make it out, unfortunately doesn't have another from the shadows, so cannot escape. But does have the ult to work with. There's an opportunity to pivot away and just TP to get the spike. Oh. That's just trying to do that. Oh, I even think I heard the, so the sound. So Panini 
was just trying to pick up the spike on towards main. The drop comes in from Sabui, and Shopify get four in a round now. Oh, it did go off. Yeah, it activated fully. The orbs are gone. One enemy remaining. And the timing there left. gets a bit scattered. A great delay. Emmy was left inside alone. You can't really blame the rest of the team for not being able to get in by taking yeah. utility in the face. And Emmy was just forced to do so much again on an island. So Shopify Rebellion is doing a great job of, of putting a wall between that jet initiator, or init jet duelist going into the site, I should say, yeah. and the rest of the team coming in behind. What's this mid-map pressure going to look like, though? They did feel confident of their move up last time. They're gonna smoke it first. Looks like Emmy just wants to keep W pressed on this one. Trying to clear an alarm button, it won't see it. Yep. Counter zero points now. Two players. Is it on the deeper? Top. Yeah, that's <laughs> what. Well, maybe they'll have to try to look here on the attack. But the thing is, is if you try to pivot back on this B yeah. site, Lori has that full control. So knife block oh in one my. area. A knife drops two. Now they even break the turret. Paranoid though. <laughs> Allow the dash to move forward. Might be catching one in the L drone, but KB still stays alive for two kills with spike the Odin, and that's a. the spike. Backstab though from Panini. There is that first. No one second. Enemy remaining. But gets information on those two players. But unfortunately, the backstab attempt from Maddie was a little bit too late. Can't trade that out right away. That's a 3v1 with the Bermuda Triangle just sinking that spike. Right in their left. view, right in their grasp. And the high low becomes a hello and a goodbye for Maddie. And while the rounds have had some fights, they've been chaotic. It is 5 to 0, Van Silly. That Shopify Rebellion is running away with this. Uh, yeah, it's on to the next a one. tough one, man. They're, they're, they're really trying to work that map too, but as we mentioned, I, I don't even think that they saw Lori with an op yet, despite the amount of right. pressure no, we're adding on different parts of the map. Roaming yeah. around. Yeah. Three ultimates ready on the side now. Our Shopify Rebellion to deny once again. The first map spread here we have from Phase off of this consistent B pressure for just about five rounds in a row. Now the push. Doing it dry. Sheriff's hoping to come up with a few frags here and they can upgrade one of these weapons. That's the perfect age, agent to play inside the site towards A. That Sabui has the paranoia to counteract. If yeah, Ace decides to just split in, that knife even coming in from B main. Or the back of B spawn, rather, to ping those two players still. And another uh, uh, recon dart to spot and drop. Jennifer towards the B main, so you definitely know that the hit's coming towards this A side. Sibui, meanwhile, had a chance to even rotate back towards the three side. Larva watching the cross from Tree, gets traded off at least. Paranoid to counteract. Nice shot from Maddie. Still an opportunity to surprise here as Emmy has the bottom of hell. There's that first shot. That's a one for one. Backstab, once again, does not work. And one more time, the spike out on an island. All the patience here from Shopify. Nice little play. Six in. Not uh, Lori there. The fast swap on Sabui's gun to be able to kill Emmy hiding. Like the forethought there was huge. Knowing the first op shot missed. Didn't know Emmy was there, but I don't if Lori didn't switch, I think Emmy picks up two there. Like things are just working out here for the quick plays of Shopify Rebellion. Six to zero now, and that's gonna get the first time out of Ascent on the board. Yeah. And once again, we wanna reiterate what White was talking about on the desk too. A map that's been pretty much figured out when you're looking at how yeah. these first six rounds have gone through. Not really anything that's a novelty from what we've seen, how both of these teams are working, both the defense and the offense, right? Cut lanes with a knob on the defense, check. Paranoia being thrown to counter out when you're holding Generate on an Omen. Check. Mid control yeah. trying to break the alarm bot. Check. The maybe slight change is what you mentioned here, Riv, before was that deeper alarm bot to allow for the bonus round to get some sort of trap play. 
But when you're looking at the fundamentals of a figure that map, it's definitely on the side of Shopify Rebellion so far. It does seem it. Still holding all these ultimates. <laughs> It does not seem like they're feeling the pressure. So how is it put on? Lockdown. Blade Storm. And your Null Command. So what? Where do they use this? Right now it's to spread to 3-2. Looks like they're going to try again to work mid. What worked on Pearl was waiting long enough to get Shopify to second guess their defensive positions. With a little bit of rotation. So that the middle of the map did work. And I think FaZe does a good job at splitting again. And like we said, having a flank and an entry from two different sides when you hit the site. It looks like that might be the objective here again. Just info gathering being done here too. The knife not spawning anybody towards B main. Now you've made sure that you cleared the alarm bot. They never saw it. It's actually still in the hands of Flowerful. Mm -hmm. So they're really trying to push FaZe forward into an angle where Flowerful could get value out of, by the way, the operator giving it to her this time around. Always been a good player on a chamber with the Thilda Falls, Shadows with the Operator, could do it so far on a Killjoy. Or at least we'll see if she could do it, as FaZe Clan are still trying to make a lot of noise, trying to fake the dash into Tree and hit it back towards mid. But all this is being heard here from the players on B main, doubling up, trying to regain control of B main to fight against Jennifer on the late lurk. Meanwhile, it becomes a one for one, and Jennifer even wins that fight on that push on B main. Oh! Nicely done by Emmy to turn away, get the kill on the Sabui. And that's a revive here on the KO. And we have A5 versus 2 now for the attack. Enemy die. KP coming around from the flank. Three still, or two to still come in, but FaZe finally getting that map positioning. Finally be a, being able to hit from multiple points instead of just the front door here. Damn, that's a cool skin. <laughs> <laughs> there was an opportunity to try to make it expensive. If KP wanted to, you're looking yeah. at the econ that they have versus phase in terms of Shopify Rebellion. That's money in the bank for sure. Panini with the swing. The timing has always been just at a slight disadvantage for KP, but at least he'll manage to escape there on that mm -hmm. double peak that came out from Panini. That said, yeah, it took a while. We finally got the first round out here for phase plan. What do we use in a process? We had a lease and all come in. I don't think we will use the lockdown from Jennifer. So there's still there's still no. opportunity to cycle that through. And maybe they didn't want to use it because you also have KP that still has her Hunter's Fury. All right. And you had one timeout, a very successful timeout. Yeah. So good call by coach. That was big. And one of the bigger, as you see, diffuses the first two rounds is when FaZe was getting to the site. They have been stopped again at the front door, like we were just saying. A timeout round for bonus and three kill rounds. So finally, FaZe getting a bit of footing here. And like you said, that lockdown is ready. So they need to stretch this. They need to break that economy of Shopify because right Shopify still feels comfortable to push these extremities and get a little dangerous because they have money. That was close. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those where those crap plays could have came through with the recon paranoia. I thought the, the Hunter's Fury was going to come out as well. They're saving it instead to, to stop the lockdown right here. So he comes out. Actually, it's been used just to get them into sight. They don't really care about the lockdown to break. And on top of that, the Nano Swarm plays through. I mean, that they're winning the round by not even showing themselves inside the site. Just Util does all of the work here for Shopify Rebellion. Spike once again for the third time out now in the open. Locked. ADS now from KP. One enemy remaining. And an instant hold from Shopify Rebellion. I feel like Shopify had a UAV the entire round. It was just like slowly closing <laughs> in on phase. What in the world was that read? So well played. And ultimate's used to do it. Can I get it this? took a bit. Shopify knew they had to commit it. Thanks. They wanted to get the rounds back in their favor. No momentum to FaZe is the name of the game here. And FaZe will still be able to buy, but this is one of those rounds that really hurts. Having your money reset right after a win back down to 1900. Get out of my way. So you got to decide who's getting the full weaponry and not. Still playing the default position, FaZe realizing it plays a little bit better once they have this control. And this one's going to be on the Emmy dash. 
don't think I've seen too many A hits this half this time around. Maybe that's why. Anchor hold for Powerful, three kills. Saunder with the support. Instantly a four versus one, or three versus one, rather. And it's up to Jennifer now. For now, doesn't really want to cut her losses. He's only going to get the backstab. And it's being watched. Yeah. It's already pinged out, too. Team full saves again next round. They'll be on 2400. So, Dai and Panini may be able to get sheriffs around. We'll see what they do. But 8 to 1 now for Shopify Rebellion, putting their foot down to close out this lower bracket match here. It looks like they're going to do it quick faster. They can keep this kind of pace up and keep taking the rounds back in their favor. And the whole team's been stepping up here. Flowerful <laughs> on the Killjoy, back and forth from site to site. We talked about the alert, bot, uh, the alarm bot Kill game, and it's like conditioning FaZe yeah. to waste time and go find it. And while FaZe is killing it, and you're still using that space pretty effectively, I just feel like the Killjoy Util game is another layer that FaZe didn't think they were going to have to deal with this game other than Great. being in sight. Here again, towards mid, you'll see how much they look for that bot. It and then they'll feels... start to proceed forward. As well, too, that Riv, yeah, they're, they're looking for the bottom mid, and it, it stays there. It's like, okay, let's take Megatron, let's take the alarm bot, but when you're trying to hit something, or you're trying to hit a site, there's not really a big, like, 3-2 split. There's not really any big utility to try mm -hmm. to engage and support from the B side or any type of A side on that, on that pinch. It just becomes this, just easy pickings. But mind you, th this is definitely an eco now for FaZe Clan, but it feels like I've seen the same thing when they have weapons to work with. Nonetheless. Okay, okay. See, that's, that's what you need. Just just regular Van Silly, just opposite Caster Curse all the time. Just Perfect. Like, start, start criticizing their play, and then they'll get an eco win, right? So Hunter's Fury out. Doesn't hit anybody yet. Does have a ping out though on the uh -oh. Sabui allowing the crossfire to work out. Their last swing to come out. Sonder on a one versus one and a threat he comes away. Four face clan. All right, I am so glad Dai actually wins this round because I, I was about to just be like, why is Spike on Cat alone? But you just see the zero point went off on Cat right there on the first replay blip. Dai was in that zero point, making tiny footsteps on Cat to draw out a possible initiator util. Then they rush towards B. So a little misdirection there by FaZe and then a whole lot of chaos inside the Zite. Yeah. And they're able to come up with that round, but really, really nicely played on a little bit of that zero point misdirection across the map. Finally, FaZe, uh, not just kind of like one directioning towards the site here, but having a few of those strategies to branch out into. This mid play comes in again, and they, uh, it feels like FaZe towards this mid game is enjoying this default setup on the map a little bit more on attack. From one direction to the back street, the oh, now dear. gets broken, and what do you do from here, right? So it continues with that, and maybe I still have to keep being negative silly here so we can see FaZe really starting to activate on our attack side, but the, the clock's still ticking. We're still really holding our default, cutting noise, and trying to force these rotates onto different spots. Forcing utilities to come out on the defensive side, which, mind you, nothing has been used yet. Right? Finally, a knife comes out to try to get some sort of info. KP still has full util inside the B site. Alan Drone now is going to get hurt by Sabui towards the A side, and it's a paranoid to hold players back. Ooh. Bomb grenade Interesting. Out. I like the play. Saunder just left. trying to flex a little bit. And they're pushing, pushing the hand of FaZe here, but it's Shopify. One player is watching that. Rotate out from the spawn. Powerful gets those two Spike kills, at least down. Emmy oh did her job. She gets that kill. But everybody else towards that B side just got picked off. I just feel like Shopify was like, no, you move this way. Push into our player. Like, yeah. That was pretty actually much. really, really nice ultimate usage there. Sondra is just in the perfect position, but the perfect timing, too, to feel like that would force the commit over towards the B site. Shopify, just everything playing into their hand on that. Nine to two into the first half right now is again, they steal the economy back 
into their favor. I mean, they've never lost it, but they are just toying with phases in this win-loss situation. Yeah. Suppress it. One thing FaZe has been good with throughout the game changes here is comebacks. So I'm going to keep that in my back pocket once they take the defensive sign. Okay. Right? But for the mil millionth time, we move up now towards middle. Break the alarm bot. Now what do we do? Feels like B Connector on Pearl, right? The way that FaZe went to play through B Connector on Pearl each time was take yeah. that out and, and at least get something else out of Shopify Rebellion. Yeah. The the thing that's difficult this time around, though, it's it's very difficult to try to pinch back from that mid side to A, so you still have to work back towards Catwalk. And when you're trying to cross this line of scrimmage to get control towards these sites, yeah. there's just still too much utility coming out from Shopify Rebellion that could counteract whatever you're trying to do. And finally, it might seem like we have some sort of a split this time around. Paranoia being thrown towards the generator to counter Paranoia. So a great opportunity here. Less flashes to be used on the A site. Less flashes for uh, a, a retake on the B site. Phase identifying that as well. Falling back. Enemy down. The Farafold pushing towards left. the B main. Wins that against Jennifer. No pinch once Revealing again. Area. Recon dart to try to get wall banks. There's two pinged out, Nano Swarm and a, uh, and a Phantom Kill. Wow. Four into the round. Down, B. And uh, Ace is stolen, but the, the result is still the same. 10 to 2 for Shopify Rebellion <laughs> in the first sides. half. Okay, FaZe had a setup on that last round where it was just Killjoy middle, Maddie was hanging out middle, and the rest of the team was Cat messing with Cat. And if Maddie had just gone up mid to make the play, that would have been an amazing lurk that they had, but it seems like there's there's only one gear for FaZe, and it, it has to have Emmy in the front line and some initiator utility over it. Where is the Panini lurk that we were seeing from last time? Where is the other team Cut feeling out. like they can push forward? Uh, I think FaZe is too easy to read on that attack side with Emmy being the initiator, being the hit. Shopify reads it, and now they get to come out just bearing teeth on this second one, ready to get the win in just a few rounds, Vincent. Base kind are looking to move very aggressively from the get-go with the bears coming up. Here. Shark attack towards the link, a knife towards the back of mid. So confirm now, Shopify Rebellion executing towards the A site. Ooh. From the ground gained. Still everybody pretty much at full HP with the exception of KP. Plant. Still go down for A main. That was uh, turbo speed. <laughs> uh, just out of the gate, they did not stop pressing W, everyone behind each other, and they have mostly ghosts in sight. Yeah. It's gonna be a very hard retake here for FaZe. Util's gonna have to be perfect. Well, there's no Util, that's the problem. There's no Util for FaZe Clan. You're, there's a oh paranoia God, that was still available. They all have ghosts too! And now finally, the first piece of Util comes out, and now it gets shot right away. For all 10 players, it becomes now the fundamentals remaining. of the crossfires, and it's all from the Rebellion here. The flawless for Shopify Rebellion, and a ghost picked up. So that classic gets upgraded. And a, look at a lot of these rounds have been Shopify on the kill board, getting five frags, taking down the round due to aim, due to trades and refrags. And that, it becomes tough to win because that means the economy game just is not gonna be in your favor. And here we have the setup. Shopify ready to dash in. Sandra with the judge. Everybody just full buying through here, basically. Sibui onto the Vandal as well. Gotta try to get it done, and looks like for FaZe, you're just looking to play the overtime. They invested so much in that pistol with the yeah. ghosts. So all classics, one share for Panini. And yeah, the last life that Lemon Kiwi mentioned before on the desk. For phase plan, they'll have to phase up starting on the next round. Map it series yeah. point for Shopify Rebellion. Match phase plan backs against the wall. This will end. And you have absolutely zero mistakes left to make in order to try to bring this to a third map. I love it. There was a reason for the judge. They smoke the inner corner. And then they, oh, I love it. I love it. Whether or not that was their smoke, but yeah. Shopify Rebellion, it's about them right now. Moving on, looking good in the lower bracket here, about to put a final point on phase. Van Silly, this has been Shopify in the second map. Angry about Pearl, it seems. Lori's yeah. gonna go right in. Repeat strat. 
Just want to end it now. Nice underhand flash at least, and Sibui, though, still continues to run forward. Double push down towards the generator. Panini trying to do whatever she can with the kills on the top okay, of the heaven side. Planted. Three kills to her name as the spike goes down. Okay. A fourth one! Last one to be spotted. Now Lori there at the generator. Hang down for the ace! Panini! Damn, the crowd. Yeah, I'm just letting the crowd calm down right now. I think you can all hear them. You can all hear them. Holy moly, that was spicy. And we were getting body shots there. No, Panini shows us again the accolade at the top of Pearl Ramp and the double kill was not a mistake. Oh my gosh, doing it here with an ace when pitted up against the entirety of Shopify back. Rebellion. Exactly the kind of uh, life builder you need here for FaZe. It's gonna take a few rounds of those, but you get a good one of those in and Panini's feeling like he can topple the world. 17 frags. Vance, the closest next one is six here. FaZe is not feeling it. Yeah. And they're still not out of the woods yet for FaZe Clan. They are Trailing not. Trailing behind by nine rounds, and at the same time, a gun round coming out for Shop Fire Rebellion. So, yeah. We're able to get a couple of kills here with the Vandal that was out for Panini. Oh, God. But that was off the bonus here that Shopify had. I this love this around. from yeah, FaZe. That was nice. That was nice. Backs against the wall, and they still want to push. It's exactly the kind of mental you need. You cannot just sit back and say, oh, we'll make the perfect shots from defense. Phase very much a team on defense that can still play that offense. Now you want to play the protocols, playing your numbers. One player advantage, pull back, try to find the info. Yeah. Well, drone coming through and even a junk spot to spot a second player. And yeah, as I was mentioned, play the power numbers, but Panini still wanted to try to push forward. I don't fault her for that, though. You mentioned it, Riz. She was definitely feeling it in terms of the frag oh, yeah. department and the number of frags she's putting through. And even with that, look at the pivot from Shopify. They're actually moving into a three-player stack on A. Well, they know Panini is the flank. So uh, they're overthinking it to say Shopify is going to rotate that. Even the Last player standing. flash miss from the Ten Omen, but left. it doesn't Recall even matter in the end. Ten seconds left. Jennifer looking to win a two versus one. Flat then comes down, and Sabui was already Ooh, waiting there. Win. And that's all she wrote in the end. Commiserations for FaZe Clan, but it's Shopify Rebellion that moves on. And FaZe Clan making it the farthest they have before growth and building. Many might have expected a little bit more, but it's Shopify Rebellion. It's somebody we've seen on the international stage. They know exactly what to do. It seems like Benita or not, this team is still a powerhouse here with Sabui and the squad in that controller position. And the rest of the team is still firing on all cylinders. They did go back and forth with FaZe on Pearl, but it, finding their footing in the second half and then carrying that into Ascent, it, it just seemed like regular old Shopify Rebellion. Exactly. That Sibui playing the controller role, replacing here uh, Benita and really filling yeah. her shoes. And it looks like Shopify is still the Shopify that we know. And, you know, Heather mentioned under the desk, really cutting out the air of all the hopium that I, the hopium air that I had in the tank here to hopefully yeah. see a third map in this series. Just Shopify Rebellion looked way too strong, but enough of us here, Rib. We'll have a chance to throw it back here to the desk right now with Lemon Kiwi and the rest of the desk to break down the series. Thanks so much, Vans. Yeah, we ran out of copium, all out of stock, but Shopify Rebellion's lower bracket run will continue another day. 13 to three for them on Ascent too. Uh, Wyatt, it feels like when Shopify Rebellion play on site that like their setups are impenetrable. Yeah, there was just nothing FaZe could do. It's a defensive sided map for sure. And we witnessed that via Flowerful just being incredible throughout the entire game on the Killjoy. This whole GC stage two, she's just been outrageous. Wow. They could not get past her. Sonder looks phenomenal on this new role. The KO is so good. The setups were great. Uh, FaZe just could not find an answer and it felt like there wasn't one to find with how well Shopify were playing. Yeah, Sapphire, I mean, we knew that Shop Shopify Rebellion were the favorites coming in. This was going to be 
just the final boss, the gatekeeper to top four for FaZe Clan, but their journey ends here in GC2. It was still a fairly strong run though for FaZe. I think so. I think there's a lot of um, good takeaways from this, right? So the, the last time when they got picked up from Hamburg Goises and they played in GC1, um, I think they were eliminated in the, the first round there. And so they've, they've made it further. So they're finishing fifth, sixth here. The team has been grinding. They've been playing so many different co-ed events. We're, we're seeing improvements, unfortunately, because of that upset in the upper bracket where Shopify had to drop down lower. Um, they, they played an opponent which they, they just don't match up against well. Um, but hopefully in the future, you know, there, there's a lot of potential here. We saw some incredible things, especially from Emmy and, and Panini here. Absolutely. I just you think that you're going to get an easier team in the lower bracket. And then here is Shopify Rebellion. Um, stats, though, Wyatt, Flowerful, Sonder. This was the matchup to watch out for. Yeah, these two are just in phenomenal form right now. And with them playing like this in the lower bracket, you had mentioned it at the top of the show, Sapphire, they made that lower bracket run on land previously, and they look poised to do it again here. Certainly worries when for the first time ever in Game Changers NA, they're dropped down to the lower bracket early on by complexity. But with play like this coming out from them, the teamwork that we saw today, the foundational aspects of the game, the fundamentals being at the, the peak level we've seen them play at really does give hope that they're about to make this lower bracket run. Yeah, and by matchup, I'm like, yeah, they're competing against each other for the high score, it feels like. But next up, Shopify could maybe get a rematch. Oh, we got Complexity and EG around the corner coming up next on stream. Sapphire, do you think we're getting uh, maybe a Shopify Complexity rematch? Because that's who took them down to the lower bracket. Yeah, I don't know. The the, the next matchup is really, really interesting too. Again, e EG was upset too yesterday by, by FaZe Clan. So I don't know. It, it's hard to say, but I, I really would like to see that matchup. I, I think Shopify is angry and I think they want revenge against Complexity. And we will maybe just get that. Um, would love to throw it to our post-match, Prime Gaming post-match highlights. And when we return, we're going to have an interview with someone from Shopify Rebellion. So please stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Verizon post-match interview. We had a banger of a series, Shopify Rebellion, take the W. And speaking of Ws, I have an amazing person joining me for this interview, KP, the IGL Grandmaster of the team. Hello, hello. I'm sure you feel good, but oh, Penguin. 
<laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I'd rather interview. <laughs> the penguin is so cute. Um, how? So now you have a stress companion, it seems, because I was just about to ask you, how was the weight on your team's shoulders having to go through the lower bracket? Um. We're not, we're not too worried about having to go through lower bracket. Definitely an early drop from us. I think the earliest in well over a year. Um, but we see this lower bracket and we know it's ours for the taking. We're really not worried. And we don't think what happened on the first day is going to happen again in this tournament. Ooh, I'm loving the confidence. Um, the analysts were really curious about some of the role swapping happening within your team, like Lori and Sonder with the initiator duelist stuff. What was causing that? Um, yeah, so we went through some turmoil. You know, we became Shopify Dread Bellion for a little bit. And <laughs> we really wanted, no uh, we really liked how Diana spoke up on some of the initiator characters. And we still love her rays and her neon. But we wanted to put Lori on a role where she can just focus on fragging out and Diana can be that like vocal initiator secondary voice that we need. And um, although it was a big change and for a while we were like pretty bad, uh, overall we've seen it's given us like a lot more consistency in our gameplay. It was just awesome to see the flexibility, the wealth of strategy, and just the awareness, the recognition of what's not working. And here, let's try something new. And yes, you're in the lower bracket, but you're still in this. And that's all that matters. Um, and as this captain or IGL of the team, how's it been just managing the team in and out of game? Uh, it's been it's been pretty good. I mean, we had, a again, that rough month. And then coming into this event, we felt pretty good. Uh, it's been a little bit difficult, this event, obviously, like with my like emergency hospitalization and stuff. Uh, that's been really difficult. Like my energy levels are just low. But I've been telling the team like every single day we keep winning. I'm just going to keep scaling and scaling as I get better, as I take the medications <laughs> they gave me. And everyone's stepping up big time and really helping me out. Like uh, right now in our rounds, um, there's a lot less of me talking. And there's a lot more of everyone else just talking, saying, yelling, doing what they want to do. And I'm kind of just chilling. And I'm, I'm honestly kind of just vibing. <laughs> like, I have a general idea of where I want to end the round. And I say it. And people just fill in the pieces. So it's making it really easy for me. Well, I can't believe you've been nerfed this whole time. And I mean, you can't really tell in the game. I'm just applaud you for how you're able to just overcome that. And now you're leveling up and the team is like has your back and picks up the mantle and at least brings the energy if you're not able to in the moment. Um, but mm -hmm. now let's look into the future. So, yes, you're going on to the lower bracket semis. Super stoked. Uh, what awaits you on the other side is either complexity or evil geniuses. Are you expecting a rematch against complexity? Oh, uh, I think that match could go either way. Uh, I'm okay playing either team. I personally kind of would like to replay complexity. Just think that on a different day where I'm feeling better and the team's more on point, um, it'll go differently. But uh, they played great yesterday. So uh, props to them. They took us down and sometimes, sometimes that happens. It's it's going to be an exciting match, uh, a lot on the line. Just for the narrative's sake, I want the rematch, but you seem confident that you're going to beat whoever, so I'm looking forward to it. Um, thank you so much for taking the time for the interview, KP, and best of luck. Yeah, thanks for having me. Bye, Penguin! I wish I knew the Penguin's name. Maybe I should have asked. <laughs> Um, everyone, that was KP from Shopify Rebellion, who just took down FaZe Clan to send them home, keep them home, out of the bracket. And we are just one match away from crowning our top four, and Shopify have officially gotten there. But up next, we're going to have Complexity versus Evil Geniuses. We're going to throw it to a break. Let us know in the chat who you think is going to win. And when we return, we're going to have some more Valorant. See you there. Unstoppable. True. He is just a consistent demon. El Diablo. Hey guys, it's Yang. Welcome to my course on Optimal Valorant Training. I'm going to be demonstrating now some angle clearing. I'll slowly come around the corner as well, making sure no one's on these off angles.
Red Bull gives you wings. My favorite thing about about Valorant would probably be the cosmetics, <laughs> the skins. Um, I think my favorite thing about Valorant is probably like the uh, the creativity behind like the skin sets that they make. I think it's very um, like I think it's one of the like best things they can do for the game because there's just so much creativity behind their skin team with it, and I think the skins are just like very awesome and very cool like i love using every single skin in the game i think my favorite thing about valorant is um just the fact that it's like an online game and i've made so 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 many friends through it i feel like that's kind of like a cheesy answer but seriously like a lot of my friends i've made through this game and i probably would not be the same person if it wasn't for this game so i'm really grateful in that sense and for the community that it's brought it's it's really amazing and it's great to be a part of um i think the my favorite thing about valorant is that each round and each game are not the same as the one before or the ones after um i like how you have to adjust each time you play the game and just use everything you have everything you've learned in your valorant experience to really implement that in that round and the rounds after um, my favorite thing about valorant is probably the opportunity it's given me to like travel around the world and i get to like work with all these cool people all the time and just things i didn't think i would experience in my life but here i am i think valorant um <clears throat> The most appealing thing about it is that I think visually it's like really captivating, you know? Like when you see the game, you see it's like really like bright, colorful, so it's really entertaining to watch, even to play. So I think that's why um, I originally got intrigued with the game. Um, besides that, it's ever changing. Like there's nothing or a meta that will stay the same for a while. Everything is changing and such. There's no introductions to maps and characters. So I think that's a really big thing as well. My favorite thing about Valorant is probably how inclusive and big it is for getting women marginalized genders everyone even more men into video games just um you know back in cs there was maybe i don't know the max we've gotten was eight to ten teams in a qualifier for a big tournament like katowice but here for just an online bct tournament we're getting just a crazy amount of teams. I don't even know how many teams, 30, 40 teams in these qualifiers. And it's it's really inspiring to see all these, you know, young gamers, new gamers, gamers that have been here that are trying a new game. And I just think Valorant's doing a really good job at bringing new people and just bringing people together. And that's creating relationships, that's creating new careers for people. And it's just really amazing to see.